The Far Cry series has changed a lot since it first launched in 2004. Not everything has been as drastic as, say, Far Cry 2's choice to abandon the genetically engineered man monsters of the first, but almost every game has done its part to tweak things in some way or another. Far Cry 6 will certainly feel familiar to longtime fans, but also take some big swings at shaking things up. Based on my experience with the first few hours in a recent remote demo, it mostly works really well, though I'm not entirely sold on some of its newer elements. The core pillars of Far Crydom, exotic locations, maniacal bad guys, and a hefty dose of madcap violence, are all still there. Other more recent mainstays like Treasure Hunts and Fangs for Hire return as well, and while I can't deny that Chirizo the wheelchair-bound dachshund is as adorable as his distraction ability is useful, I think my favorite recruit so far is Guapa the Alligator. He's handsome, he's hungry. Simple. Aside from the shift back to third-person cutscenes, which we haven't seen since the original Far Cry 17 years ago, the biggest change to the Far Cry formula is probably how character progression works. Since Far Cry 3, we've earned XP to unlock new perks and abilities in those RPG-style skill trees, but not anymore. Now, almost all of your character progression is tied to your weapons and gear. And while that's definitely a big departure from the norm we've come to expect, I think it works, for the most part. You do still technically level up, increasing your gorilla rank as you complete missions, clear outposts and checkpoints, and generally do all the Far cry -y stuff we know and love, but instead of earning skill points to unlock abilities, you'll gain access to new gear, particularly the new Resolver weapons and Supremos, the zanier guns and gadget backpacks you might have seen in previous trailers, which can then be customized with mods that offer perks and buffs that mirror the skills we're used to. The simplest way to look at it now, I think, is like this. Instead of picking a ton of upgrades you'll always have, you can now swap between them like separate loadouts. If I want to avoid a fight, maybe I'll equip the EMP Supremo that deactivates security cameras, alarms, and vehicles, and pair it with a vest that reduces movement noise and some distraction-focused consumables. Or, if I do want to go loud, I could use the Furioso Supremo that blasts a ring of fire around me with bullet and flame-resistant gear and a kit full of grenades and molotovs. And a flamethrower, obviously. This right tool for the right job mentality extends beyond just a simple choice of playstyle, though. It's something the design team has baked into every encounter you'll face. Probably the most important weapon module unlock are the different ammo types, since just about every enemy you'll run into has resistances and vulnerabilities to one or the other. Armored enemies require AP rounds, for example, and other varietals like explosive or poison ammo have been added into the mix, too. This will surely make for some interesting tactical decisions later on, but I also found myself a bit frustrated with how often I had to run to a crafting station to swap in a new type of ammo before getting into a firefight. It was never a real hassle to find one, almost every enemy outpost or crossroads has one nearby, but a lot of the fun of Far Cry for me has always been that scramble to come out on top when a plan goes awry or you randomly cross paths with an enemy patrol. That's a hard feeling to recapture if you're being penalized for having fire bullets loaded in instead of explosive rounds. I'm also not wild about the series' move towards health bars you need to drain for each enemy. To be clear, enemies in Far Cry 6 aren't the full-on bullet sponges they were in New Dawn, and there are some guaranteed one-hit kills at your disposal. But as someone who typically ascribes to the being shot in the face should kill you mentality, I can't help but feel a little frustrated when that doesn't happen. That said, there are some interesting strategic additions to Far Cry 6's combat too. Some new enemy types add the good kind of hurdle that makes firefights more dynamic and feel more frantic. Medics, for example, can revive fallen comrades, while engineers and officers, I mean, this is an actual army you're fighting after all, not a ragtag bunch of pirates or cultists, will plant turrets and call reinforcements, or can even target an airstrike towards you if you found a sniper's perch. Personal gripes about hit bars aside, it's worth noting that the UI is customizable enough that you can remove the visual aspect at least. What works in Far Cry 6 seems to really work, and I'm excited to explore more of Yara. It's a big, beautiful world that offers some interesting new ideas and challenges, and I'm looking forward to seeing just how this iteration of the Far Cry formula comes together in full. For more on Far Cry 6, watch the latest official story trailer, or check out the six wildest things we saw in our demo. And for more on games, or just adorable animal companions, stick around on IGN.